Last time, Bennett soloed Storm Terror in a very anticlimactic battle, saving Mondstadt in the process. This video, we are venturing into Liyue, the land known for its contracts. Or should I say, the land known for climbing. Because the only thing we do here is climb. That aside, will we be able to beat Li Yue using only Bennett? Let's find out. Before we begin, quick update. I hit AR-56 and still no Bennett. Ah. Upon arriving, we head out in search of Morax, the Archon of this region. Just kidding, he's dead. And they suspect us of doing it because we're basically a foreigner. That sounds a bit racist. As we get chased by the Melolith, we get saved by a fellow criminal child. No, not this child. Bling. This one. Did you guys know his real name is Ajax? That's the name of a soccer team. He gave us a lot of of info that I can summarize in one sentence. I know it's not you, I'm not racist. So to clear our name we search for the powerful Adepti. And it's just a deer. I won't lie, I expected it to be a bit more scary. The Minoth finds us, but they get beat up by a single child. I'm really worried for this country. We have to enter an abode next in search of the next Adeptus. We have to fight a bunch of slimes, solve this very difficult puzzle, and we already found the Adeptus. And she's just a bird. We ask for her help, she leaves. Okay. Okay. At Wangshu Inn, we encounter another Adeptus. He tells us some very wise words. Once the snow is thick enough, we can eat it. Zhao doesn't want to hear us out, so we need to make him some food in the hope that he will actually do something. What the? Did this ghost just really lead me to a ruin hunter? I think she wants me to join her. Anyways, we get Zhao's almond tofu. He finally listens to us now and is actually gonna do something. I guess food really saves lives. We go back to child. We tell him about the tea and not this again. I thought we were done with this. In order to gain XP, I decided to fight the Pyro Regstein. Think it's a good idea to already gather materials. You know, before its level is gonna increase. As you already know, this is an only bandit challenge. So no breaking the core with the Hydro character. I had to literally slap this thing for 5 minutes straight. And I only got one of these Everflame seeds. I need two of them to ascend Bennett. So I had to do it again. Of course, this time, I get two Everflame seeds. I think our Bennett is pretty decent. Harbinger of Dawn is pretty good for a 3 star weapon. However, there is one problem with it. The sword's passive increases crit rate by 17.5% when HP is above 90%. As most of you probably know, Bennett heals up to 70% of a character's HP. And I'm too lazy to go to statues to heal after every fight, so this passive is almost never active. We are in dire need of Miss Splitter. Anyways, I was able to rank up eventually. However, before we can continue on with the story, we must do the ascension quest first. We are not scared of anything on this channel. Except Raiden Shogun, maybe? The quest starts off strong. Not only do we have to fight two Healy Churls and a Mita Churl, but there's also a Ruin Guard chilling in the corner. Fortunately, with our newly upgraded Bennett, it was really doable. There were two Healy Trolls and an Abyss Mage on these platforms, living their best lives, I guess. So I pulled the most thousand IQ play. I just flew past them. Although they were trying to snipe me, for the 50th time today, I encountered even more Healy Trolls. There wasn't really anything worth mentioning in this fight. Next up, it's this guy. I forgot what his name was. It doesn't matter, I beat them all up. Yo, let's go! It may be weird that I sound happy, since this combo can be really dangerous as they can just freeze you. But I'm so grateful that there is no Pyromage. So far, we haven't even encountered one. Remember kids, it could always be worse. Our final challenge is the Electro Hypostasis. I'm gonna be honest, this fight was probably the least challenging of them all. We go to Northland Bank to find Child, he's not there. Go to Lily Pavilion to find him. Thanks game, we could have just gone straight to this place. Here we meet- Oh my gosh, is that Morax? By the way, Mr. Zombie, if that's your real name, when are you going to have a rerun? Look man, I don't have Bennett nor you, some of the most used characters in Spiral Biz. I don't understand how I survived that place. It's time to do something very exciting, running errands! I don't know why, to be honest. I haven't been paying attention to the story. Child has funded us. I hope he can also give me a small loan of a million dollars. We go to this guy to get some Noctiluus Jade. I think he wants to scam us. So we go to a hilly troll camp and throw our rocks into their soup to see which one's legit. Poor hilly trolls. We just interrupted their dinner. Next, we go to this lady to get perfume. I guess Morax wants to smell nice. I don't know for who though. Madam Ping maybe? This woman starts acting a little sus though. She reminds me of someone. Okay, who's gonna tell her it's Traveler's Age? Now we're in Madam Ping's teapot. I swear this quest is all over the place. Finally, we do some fighting though. There has been a lot less fighting compared to Mondstadt. Then again in Mondstadt we had to level up our adventure rank every 10 seconds. We just have to beat a bunch of slimes, nothing difficult. Hey, there are actually spiders in this game. 
It's shooting at me. Okay, we were here for a bell apparently. What use is that gonna have? I don't know. We meet up again with Child. He starts roasting Zhongli about not having any money. I would have loved to join in, but I can't really talk. I have no Mara either. We do some bargaining. After we meet up with Child again, for like the 50th time today, he might as well come with us. The Traveler notices him being a bit sus. He gets mad at us for thinking he's being sus. You might as well admit it, everyone knows already. We head to Boo Boo Pharmacy. Look, it's everyone's biggest nightmare. I might be Bennetless, but I'm also Chi Chi-less. Probably won't be for long though. She won't give us the stuff we need because we don't have a prescription. So she sends us to find the infamous Coco Goat. I don't think this is legal for an employee to do. Oh well. We did not encounter a Coco Goat, but we did encounter the treasure hoarders. This is great actually. Now I can strip them off of their emblems and sacrifice them to Bennett. There may have been no Coco Goat, but at least dinner with our favorite grandpa makes up for it. However, some rando interrupts our dinner and tells us a whole story about Ningguang. You simp. Moral of the story, she's rich. But the question is, can she give me a small loan of a million dollars? Oh god, we need to rank up again. Story quest time. I am gonna be honest, I have no idea what this quest is about. It's called Justice for Books' Sake. But what does that even mean? Did the books get hurt? We do meet Forsar Yelan. Genuine question, why zoom in on his legs? We fight some of these guys, I don't know why, but we do. There's one more fight. I was daydreaming so hard that I accidentally used Sing Cho Z, thinking Bennett was still selected. Alright, that's it, challenge over. I'm deleting this account. I'm just kidding, I have to satisfy my gambling addiction and spend these wishes before I delete anything. I panicked, so I just ran away. I came back and he was at full health again. This time I was paying close attention. Eventually we get to AR28. Ning Guang invited us to the J chamber, but we have no idea how to get up there. My god, you are a terrible host. We fight the millet again. This battle was totally unnecessary. I forgot the traveler was in my party. I put him in there because I had to use animo to activate the wind current. And he's level 7. It's not like he's gonna be able to do anything. We get Ningguang a gift because Paimon wants a small loan of a mild patch. He pulls himself together. Let's see how SpongeBob's party is shaping up. No, the reason we don't trust you is because you thought it was us! Suspecting someone for killing the Archon of the country. That's not something you just throw around. Ningguang tells us a lot about the history of Li Wen Tibet. But who cares, let's speed up the Fatui. I went for the Geo one first, because when he puts up his shield, I feel like it's gonna take a long time to beat him with just Bennett. Next victim is the Cryo Agent. His shield goes down very fast. After that, it's time to end the Lecture one. Lastly, it's the one with the Pyro Shield. God, the PTSD is coming back. We head to the golden house since a certain ginger has gone cuckoo. So here's our next big fight. Last time we two faced Valin, but this fight is obviously different and harder. Actually, it was not. I don't know what's up with Bennett, I think he has enough of being a sport. Just look at that damage. Not to mention the fact Bennett can heal himself helps out so much in these fights. His burst also charges up very quickly. We should have just beaten up Child the moment we saw him. It would have saved us so much time. We saved a whole nation again with a very anticlimactic battle. Or not. Well, everything went from 0 to 100 real quick. But thank god everyone is here. I'm sure they can fix this. Surely you guys don't expect me to do something, right? Madam Ping, you gotta carry us. This was a very dragged out battle. We get powers from our friends to use. Be careful not to get hit. Of course, I'm great at that. They just keep coming. Right, in order to win, we drop the whole Jade Chamber. I think we should have started with this. But Liyue has been saved at last, finally. Everyone is friends again. However, our happiness doesn't last long. As Zhongli just hands the noses over to Signora, all of our efforts were for nothing. What's even worse is that Liyue never was in any real danger. It was all just a test to see if the humans and Adaptai could continue without an Arquan. Grandpa just wants to retire. But you're telling me that all this could have been avoided? That's it, you're going down. I guess we all got pranked. We're gonna let Senora have this victory. It's not gonna last long. Right, I've had enough of Li Wei. We're gonna continue on. I'll miss Madam Ping though. She's a real one. We finally encounter Dainsleaf. I have a game theory, right? What if Dainsleaf is our dad? Since, you know, the Travelers and Dainsleaf are the only ones with blonde hair. <laughs> We go to a temple. It's not too bad at the beginning. Just a bunch of hilly churls. 
Oh no, fortunately we can break these things to make it rain. It was super effective. Well, that went quite easy. I went for the Hydro Mage first because that one doesn't take five hours to beat. I tried to pull a big brain and make it so the Hydro Mage hit the Pyro one with an attack to break the Pyro shield. It did not work out. I don't know why, but the Pyro Mage just keeps camping in this corner and wouldn't leave. Right, so I knocked the Hydro Mage off the platform. Normally this kills an enemy, but this guy just respawned back with a full shield. I did not miss this. I'm so happy this is over. You cannot be serious. I just encountered a pyro mage and this one is Hydro. I think those guys from the temple came back to haunt me. Sadly, just now it started raining. It never does when there's a pyro mage around. Finally, I was able to trigger some elemental reactions. So some stupid idiot is in another quest. I finished that real quick. Now we can finally go back to finding our sister. We should have done that from the beginning instead of involving in countries' politics. We head to temple number 5000. There are bells trying to kill us now. I've seen it all. Oh, there's a guy here. And he's dead. See kids, this is what happens when you play too much Fortnite. This next section was genuinely so painful. It shouldn't have been, but it was. We got a game over. Because a bunch of bells. It took me a bit too long to realize that stepping on these platforms is what causes them to break. This is the third time I've done this quest by the way. The boss of this temple is an Abyss Herald. It only took me 40 seconds to beat. You know, a pyro mage takes way longer and you're supposed to be the boss of this place. Right, I have personal beef with this quest because it absolutely throws the worst enemies possible at you. A cryo and hydro mage, a cryo and hydro mage and a rune hunter, a cryo and pyro mage and a rune guard. This sounds like a joke, but it's not. Of course they throw in another pyro mage as well, just to be sure. How could I forget another abyss herald with a hydro shield we're almost at the end of the quest the only thing blocking our way are a bunch of bells there's no way i'm going to die again and my suffering for the final battle, we have an Abyss Herald and the Pyro and Hydro Mage. Honestly, I took down the Hydro Mage and just ignored the Pyro one. I was hoping defeating the Abyss Herald was enough for progress. And it was enough. But before we go on, this Herald was so annoying. The way it just keeps attacking. Like, what's going on here? Just let me hit you one more time. We finally found our sister. And she leaves. That's the end of the quest. We're just left with even more questions. The game could have been finished by now. Come on, Lumine. Hi everyone, before the video ends I just want to thank you all real quick. The support on the videos has been absolutely insane, thank you all so much. Know that all of it is greatly appreciated. And I just wanted to give you guys a teaser real quick about who the next solo Genshin Impact challenge is gonna be about.